とね、本当にいいこと言います。Um, so I thought, oh, I'll just set up my camera and everything, and、uh, I'll be able to podcast from down here whenever I want without a lot of setup. However, that's not really working for me today because of the light. So, and I feel so it's not vanity for sure. It's not vanity doing it without my glasses. It's more to do with、um, uh, just not bothering you with the light rings. So, anyway,、um, this is the second. Time I've tried to record this podcast. I did another one from upstairs and、uh, I was very proud of it. It was really good. I have to sit back. I see. I had to sit back. My dog, my dog is looking at me in the window like, What are you doing? Hey, b r i d i e She's going to start pawing or something. Anyway,、um, and I went to upload it into,、um, onto my computer from my phone. And lo and behold, they were, it was just one picture and there was no podcast. So I talked to myself for 35 minutes and nothing was recorded. And、um, so I haven't really had the urge until now to, to come back and give it a try. Now I can see the clock go, moving on the camera, so I'm fairly certain that I am recording today.、Um, so this is the In Stitches podcast, as I mentioned at the beginning.、Um, This is episode four. I'm Connie, and you can reach me at Instagram at Connie Meek or at Stitches at In Stitches Podcast.、Um, Ravelry, I'm Pickup Sticks.、Uh, and Wendy, you can, my podcast partner who's out for the moment, and given the circumstances, we wouldn't have been able to podcast together anyway. So um, uh, she it can be reached at Wendy Lee Dempsey、uh, on Insta. and... Wee Wee Knits on Ravelry, although she's not on there very often. We're gonna start a new Ravelry group one of these days. Got nothing but time on my hands, so why rush doing anything?、Um, called In Stitches Podcast. And we're gonna, that's where we'll hold all our contests and everything going forward because it'll be easier for people rather than comment.、Um, of course, comment below. We wanna hear what you have to say.、Um, But for, for, contacts, for contests, I think we'll move it into Ravelry、um, rather than attach subscriptions and comments together. It's proving to be too difficult. So, as you remember in the last podcast, I was giving away, which I did not bring, stacks of stuff to show you, but I was giving away a, a skein of yarn. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is just comment below. <laughs> Uh, we have a comment from a couple comments from last time that will be entered in the draw, and we'll include this one too because there wasn't very much、um, activity the last time. So,、um, so, comment below for the contest for the free skein of yarn. And I can't think of the name of the company. Canadian Dyer works with her husband, lives out west. It'll come to me when I'm least. Expecting it, so when I blurt it out, you'll, you'll know. Oh, she remembered. So,、uh, I guess I can't really avoid talking about what's going on in the world.、Um, it's, it's getting to me, I have to say. I just, I just don't know what to do with myself, frankly. I was never, I was always kind of a homebody, anyways. And I'm more, I'm, I'm an extrovert. People would say I'm an extrovert, but I have some very introverted qualities. I like my quiet time. I like withdrawing, being alone, thinking my day through.、Um, my husband, he'll, you know, I'll come home from work and he'll say, Oh, what's going on? And I'll go, I can't even talk about it <laughs> because it's just in my head and I'm processing it all. So I don't know if that's introverted or not. But anyway, I, I am having so, but I'm missing the contact so much. And fortunately, I've been part of a couple of、um, Zoom meeting groups.、Um, One is with the knitting loft. We're doing it on Sundays, 
and um, I'm thinking of setting one up here, um, setting one up for InStitches podcast viewers, and um, so I can meet some new people and some new knitters and some old old faces that I usually run into at the Knitting Loft that I'm not gonna be running into anytime soon. So um, I'm thinking of um, doing that, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask you to, uh, if you're interested, actually, if you're interested in me um, setting up a Zoom meeting for our, the viewers of In Stitches podcast, just leave me a comment below, and I'll set it up, and if there's a particular, probably a weeknight at seven o'clock or eight o'clock, um, although the eight o'clock ones typically only go for an hour because we're so exhausted from the day of doing nothing, um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do a Zoom meeting with for In Stitches podcast. Um, and maybe Wendy can join us from time to time. Um, her her radiation treatments are over and everything went appears to have gone really well and it's just about recovery right now. So um, continue, thank you for all the good wishes that you all posted for her and uh, continue to send them and your prayers because um, won't be long and she'll be back and we will be isolated and I will have, we'll have to figure out something else <laughs> on this podcast. Um, so I've been very fidgety with my knitting. I have not been able to settle on anything. I keep thinking, oh, I'll do this project and that'll be the answer. And then I do it for five minutes. I think, no, this is not the one. Um, so, and I've turned my attention quite heavily to purchasing yarn, which, um, well, I explained the last time that I'm trying, it's not that my husband cares how much yarn I buy, he doesn't care but it, it, it's kind of a joke and it's kind of getting, like in the last month I bought quite a bit, so I don't really want him to like see exactly how much I have. So um, I've been running to the mail every day before he gets home and getting the boxes. Um, and I've got some really good um, acquisitions to show you. Uh, so, um, and I also have a couple works in progress um, and well, and my new one, which is part of a make along that I'm doing with the Knitting Loft, which I'll talk about more um, towards the end. So, um, so my work's in progress. Uh, I have been working on, and this does get, this, this actually does give me some level of comfort, as you can see by the amount I have knitted. Um, I don't know, it's just easy. And it's the sock. It is the first chicken from Hugh Loco's um, chicken, chickens. She Every year she comes out, there are four chickens and I actually have them all to show you. This one, trying to keep the tag so I could tell you. I had grand plans for this, but I got, so the backyard chicken collection, uh, 7525 Merino nylon, 460 yards in the 100 gram skeins and um, two 20 gram minis. Um, and this one, I said the last time is silver duckwing aracana. And uh, at first it was pooling a bit and I didn't really, wasn't really sure. And then it started doing this um, striping and I really liked it and I love the little mauve heel. I've just attached the main color back to finish the foot and I'm gonna do the toe the same color. And then um, I may reverse them, I'll have to see how much um, I may reverse it in the next sock. So reverse the colors for the stripes and recur, um, reverse the heel colors just to make them more interesting. I had great plans of only knitting the cuff and then, and then cause I didn't want to do two at a time, two at a time. So I had another set of um, Knitter's Pride needles. So I was gonna do the cuff on one and the cuff on, on another and then the leg and then the leg. So that ultimately at the end I would be pretty close to having two finished at the same time, but I got interested in what the yarn was doing. And so haven't done any of this, but uh, I highly recommend. I know the Knitting Loft does stock some Hue Loco minis, which are fabulous and you can easily do um, socks with minis, um, some scrappy socks with minis, but I just love this purple and orange. It looks like it's pretty clear on my, when I'm looking. Um, and yes, I, I actually learn socks on DPNs and often revert back to them. I don't see the 
huge difference between them and Magic Loop. You still have to push the loop throughout and you know, this way you can just keep switching needles. I don't know. I mean, sure, everybody has their own opinion, but um, that's what I'm doing for this particular pair. The pattern is Emily's favorite socks from Emily Foden, who is Viola Yarns. And um, she has the sock pattern in this book. And there's a million variations. And uh, it really is a really great sock to knit. It fits really well. It keeps you occupied and interested because the um, because of the three one rib in the leg. Um, it's just really, really good. So if you, if you don't have the book, certainly pick it up because there's a lot of great patterns and she's Canadian. Um, and uh, if you don't, you can get the one single sock pattern, Emily's favorite socks from Ravelry. And anything I talk about, I will be linking below when I, what happens is I listen to this back and then I make all notes of what I've talked about and then go searching for all the links. So it's like a project. So that's that. And then the other project I've been working on that I have on my needles is um, a test knit for Andrea Patron. And it's, I'll show you, called Fleur et Baton. I, and I showed it last time, but this time I've actually um, uh, steamed it out a little bit and straightened up. So those those big openings here, these ones here, it's like they're trees. So I'm supposed to be like looking through the trees, you see? And uh, there's little, but, little buds and I, the little flowers I showed last time. So... This is really a, uh, look what happened. A big bunch fell off the end of the needle. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna be able to fix it now, but this yarn is really nice to work with, although slippery. Um, it's from the Knitting Loft. I don't know if they, it's out in the general population of stock yet because they didn't have all the colors in. It's from, uh, what is it from? From Durham Natura. Think. No, I'm probably saying it wrong. No. Dura, Durham Natura. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. And it's Anti, Antigoni or Antigon. I'm not sure. In the color Cypress. So it looks pretty good um, in this light. And it is 100% uh, linen. So linen comes with its own challenges being slippery and it doesn't look always that great when it knits right just as you're knitting it. So that's why um, I did steam it a little bit just so I could see exactly what I was doing. And also um, this has to be knit to 49.6 inches. So I have quite a bit to go. Um, and as I keep touching it, I keep knocking more and more stitches off the needle. <sighs> So I will push it back on, put it back in the bag, and fix it later. I don't know if I have. Yeah, so these are, I don't want to keep away anything. These are the trees and then the flowers. I have the flower, some flowers done, and I don't know. And then the finished, oh, here. And these are the little buds. So that's some just kind of quick distracting work in between the 49 inches that I have to knit. Um, the trees were good. I, they came out, the first set were not that great and then I got onto it and they came a lot faster. Um, and I just love, if you go and follow her Instagram, Andre knits a lot, um, she has some great shots of it. And uh, it's a beauty. It's going to be gorgeous when it's done. And I have it all figured out: white shirt, denim jeans, and my scarf. So those are really my two main projects. It feels like I should have a thousand because I keep getting yarn out and don't do anything with it. Um, I have. Uh, so okay. So how am I going to do this? I'll go to acquisitions. So 
I have valiantly been trying to order yarn weekly, mostly from the knitting loft because they have every yarn in the world. So it's hard to want to go somewhere else. Um, and uh, this is a, well, this is a blow to every business, um, but they were, they're planning a big um, expansion. Um, so, uh, and I miss seeing them. So I love them. Love you, Maria. Love you, Bruna. Anyway, so um, I've been or I've been ordering from them, um, and this just came today. I ran to the post office before. Um, I don't know. My friend Sarah, she posted a picture of three sp spin cycle, dyed in the wool, and I said, "What are you doing with that?" And she sent. She said, uh, "It's the the um, Andrew Mowry." Seriously, I had it. I should have wrote it down. Shift cowl is what it is. There it is. Um, and so this is the color I picked. See, my looks nice with my hair, I think. <laughs> with my blue hair, um, I picked the colors Castaway, uh, Tangled Up in Blue, and Labrad Labradorite. So these three are going to be my shift cowl and um, they came super quick. Everything from there, because it's in Toronto, it comes really quick. And so I was excited because I haven't knit a lot. I haven't knit anything actually and dyed in the wool. Um, and so these are my, I've purchased a couple other skeins for another project, which I'll share with you. And then um, I purchased these for the um, shift cowl. So, but I won't. I don't know when I'll be getting started. Depends when the mood strikes me. Um, then you saw my first chicken. So these are coming in the mail and I don't even know why I'm attracted to these chickens. Like I should have a coop outside and just display my chicken yarn out there. But I love, I, I love them. And it happened at Christmas when I knit my brother-in-law a pair of socks um, out of a rooster colorway, I think. And they were just stunningly gorgeous. So now I want all the chickens. Um, so this one, I don't even know which is next. I think this one might be. Two came together yesterday and one came today. And then I still have one more on order. Don't tell, don't tell. Um, the first chicken and the new, the newest chicken, I think, or the newest, the first rooster and the new rooster comes out today. But I think I'm gonna wait till next week and start ordering them in twos because I don't think the shipping would be that much more um, and it's getting kind of expensive to ship them to Canada. Um, so this one, okay, this is the Rhode Island Red. So I had no idea there were so many kinds of chickens. They're all also the same, her fill sock, 7525, 460 yards in the skein and uh, two minis. She doesn't give the colors of the minis, but she's very good at picking them and putting them together. So you can have a lot of fun. You can put a stripe of each in your ribbing. You can alternate stripe your heel, stripe your toe. There's a lot of things you can do. And, and like I said, I really like um, the, my favorite socks, but um, and the colors are so gorgeous. I really like just doing a vanilla sock or as plain as it can be. So this is, uh, again, Rhode Island Red. And then this one is Sumatra. She's a hen. And this is gorgeous. It's got that mint and purple and the mint and gray. And there's some bits of purple in there as well. So all of them are going to be fun to knit for sure. So that's the second, the third chicken. And this is the fourth chicken. This is the blue Langshan um, hen. And it's a really pretty one. This is a beautiful, um, see all that colors? It's beautiful. Um, this is the same thing, 75, 25, 460 yards in the main skein and 240 and 40 grams in the two minis. Um, 20 grams each. So um, again, this one, she's really good at matching colors with what's going on in the skein and making them interesting and making them um, bright. So 
uh, and fun. They're fun. I don't know why. But can you imagine? I should just have a little chicken. I have a little cubby. Put all my chickens together. <laughs> so I don't know. This knitting thing, it gets to you after, like you get on these binges and for what, for why do I need to have all the hens? But you must have them. It's a rule once you decide. Um, and then I have been, a couple podcasts ago, we were talking about Cozy Posy who had um, arrived at the knitting loft and I had um, eyed some yarn that day and was planning to take it and Wendy really liked it too. So I um, decided, okay, I'll let her take it. And um, she took it and she's been knitting, um, I think a Millie with it. Um, and I just got mine in the mail this week. And I'm gonna be doing Love Note, I think. I'm pretty sure. And I cannot even stand how gorgeous these are. This is Graffiti Girl. Look at this. Yeah, Graffiti Girl, and this is a MCN. So it's 70 merino, 20 cashmere, and 10 nylon. So these are three Graffiti Girls. And then I can't, sh I don't think I can hold them all. She has some, um, so I got the matching mohair, which is 72% um, kid mohair, 28% silk. So these two are gonna be together. And these are both Graffiti Girl. Just they take the color obviously differently. So um, these two are considerably, or this one I, and I don't know, I guess you don't ever know until you take it out and wind it, but one looks considerably lighter than the other. But I think that once they're all mixed with the um, Graffiti Girl floof, um, they'll be good. It'll be good. So, um, and since I'm now such a fan of helical knitting, I should have no problem whatsoever, except I'm not sure I like mohair. <laughs> so so this will be the first thing. I've added mohair into hats and I enjoy working with it, but I'm not sure I'm gonna enjoy wearing it. Soft. I don't know. It's just my neck, it could be picky. Anyway, I can wear a t-shirt under it or something. Um, or just wear it, get the compliments and then take it off. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, Cozy Posy yarn in Fancy and Floof in Graffiti Girl. It comes from the Knitting Loft um, and they're a uh, regular stock, stockist of her yarn. Yay. Um, okay, so that's that. That's the good thing about this, now that I've talked about it, I can put this stuff all the way in my shelves and my husband will never know it arrived. <laughs> so, um, he, uh, he just, he's like, really? Every day there's a package and I'm like, I know, Greg, I know, I, I don't know, it ha I have to. I'm going to be famous, I must buy the yarn. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, Brooklyn Tweed did an amazing uh, promotion with their stores and you could pay 10% off, 20% off or 30% off and they would make up the difference for the retailer. Um, I think it's still going on, so I think you can still get it at a discount and Brooklyn Tweed will reimburse the store um, for the discount, the discount. So I bought it at 30% off. So I bought 10 skeins. Um, and so I got a 30% discount on mine and then the store would get that money back. Um, I don't know how it works, but somehow it works. They get the money back from their, um, from Brooklyn Tweed, which is, sort of a way to um, increase the sales of yarn at a time like this when we don't really know. I mean, I really have no business doing what I'm doing. I, uh, I'm i in real estate and it's really slowed down. It's not a great time. Um, people don't want strangers in their houses. Um, people don't wanna go and look at strangers' houses. So it's, uh, I mean, there is some need. There are people that absolutely have to buy a house or sell a house. So course we're here to take care of them but but um you know it's a little unsure what's coming um hopefully it'll rebound all back when it's when it's back together so anyway I loved Jody Tracy Jody Jody from, from the um grocery girls uh, she has a Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry in this black and white 
newsprint shelter and I love it. And I can imagine myself wearing this all over the place with black leggings or jeans or, or whatever. So I bought enough, it's the worsted weight, 140 yards. So I bought enough to make myself a weekender and it's in the newsprint colorway from uh, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. So, and it comes from um, Needles in the Hay in Peterborough. So she, um, super quick, um, I mistakenly checked the box that I would pick it up and she caught it. She realized I was not gonna be driving from Georgina to P Peterborough. And she called and she said, I realize um, that you, you probably made a mistake on the delivery and we're offering, they are offering $8 shipping, flat rate $8 shipping um, to also help knitters keep knitting in this, um, in this thing that's going on, this isolation. Uh, so that's that. So, um, okay, so what else? So those are my projects, my acquisitions. A um, couple things going that I really love that I found on, there's a lot of things I love that I found online, but actually had my act together enough to print the patterns. Um, I have two skeins upstairs of dyed in the wool, and I also have two skeins of Peary from Brooklyn Tweed. And lo and behold, I found this pebble wrap um, from Wool and Honey. I don't think it was a free pattern. I'm pretty sure it's not a free pattern, but it's a, it's a triangle shawl and it uses two skeins of Brooklyn Tweed Peary and two and one skein of um, dyed in the wool. So I actually have one extra skein, but um, which is good because I have one I like better than the other. So, so if this is a good, you can go to the Wool and Honey website and there's a list of their patterns, or I'm sure you can find it online. So it's Wool and Honey Pebble Wrap, and it's really, really cute. And 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 Peary is, um, I think it's just a, it's a DK or sport. Doesn't say. I think it's sport or DK. Twenty four stitches, yeah. Mm -hmm. After blocking, so it might be. Um, I don't know. I don't remember, but um, I have it in this beautiful pink, and uh, I think it'll be really nice. So that's one of the things on my to do list. Um, the last thing is a big long story. Um, the Knitting Loft, we had a Zoom meeting last weekend, I think, with the regular regulars from Sunday afternoon, and Maria was talking about wanting to do a knit along, and um, I had mentioned that um, something as a keepsake to mark this this period of time that we're in. And the, what happened when, I think I told you, when my mother passed away, um, people were knitting in the waiting room, and I was thinking, oh, I used to do that. I maybe should do that. Anyways, I only thing I could do think to do after she died was knit. Everything else was awful. So I went to the yarn store. I bought some Noro, and I bought it. There was on the pattern. There was a woman wrapped up in a blanket, and I said that that's what I want. And it just signified comfort and love and some somebody hugging you. So um, and all through the most intense grief. Um, I knit, I knit that pattern. My husband would come home and I'd be crying, tears pouring down my face, knit, knit, knit. And it just gave me such solace. And that's really what started me all back again into the whole yarn thing. Um, I was very, you know, when the kids were, my older two are 30 and 30, 84, 34, 35. I don't know, maybe 36. Um, and they are, um, when they were little, I would knit, there was a local store and she sold beehive and things like that. And I didn't ever, I really didn't recognize the difference in qualities. And I don't think back then at 30 years ago, plus there was really that significant, um, the whole hand dyeing thing hadn't started yet, but once it started, it really captured me. I think that there's a great many artists out there, um, dyeing their yarn. 
So as a result of that conversation and other people's um, input, Maria uh, and Bruna decided to, to um, make or have a make along. So it's called, if you can see, it's called the Knitting Loft make it, Making History. So together, let's make history. So that just something, I mean, for me, it's, it's gonna be something that I can always look back on and say, oh, remember when we were in quarantine? I did this. So, um, and, and, and it's open to the public, make along. It's being done in the Facebook group of the Knitting Loft. And uh, anyone can join. All crafts, skill levels, and arts are welcome. Any handmade project that will last over the years. So it doesn't have to be knitting um, or crocheting or any 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 handcraft that you love, you can um, do it. So uh, I think tomorrow there is a, uh, a Zoom meeting, um, the introductions and preparation to pick your project and your materials. Um, so the Zoom kickoff party is tomorrow night at six o'clock. Now, the only thing that I'm going to, well, I'm going to miss seeing everybody in person because that's always a ton of fun, but they always feed us at the Knitting Loft for things like this. And I'm going to really miss like the pizza or whatever they usually get. <laughs> um, and then the project completion is January 7th and um, or January, oh God, June 5th, project completion, and then Zoom or in-person after party to time to be determined, project show and tell along with winner announcements. And there's a bunch of different um, things that they're doing. And there people are knitting all sorts of things. Someone, my friend Sarah is knitting the shift cowl, somebody's knitting a sweater. Um, so there's all sorts of things, all range of sizes, doesn't matter what you knit. It would just be great to have you participate. And believe me, I'm finding these, these Zoom meetings are really uplifting, I have to say, to reconnect with those that I share this passion with is really amazing. So, so in, um, and then look, then I saw this pattern that came out by Casa Pinka. It's called Blanket of Calm. And it really is, it's a, it's actually a really great project for this time, particularly if you're struggling with a big thing to do, um, was, uh, she, has all these um, squares, fingering weight scrap yarn, 12 grams makes a square. And um, so you can just make a couple squares and it's not too taxing on your, you know, a few squares a night or you can sit all day and make squares. Um, you can make two, they, she gives instructions for two different sizes. Um, and uh, I know Christina from Chelsea Yarns is uh, dyed up some minis. Um, that I love and I'm waiting for them to come back in stock so I can get them to add to my um, stash. So so taking the crochet theme, I thought, okay, I don't really want to have to put this together. Although I understand that there are instructions coming for how to join them together with crochet rather than sewing. Um, and so it's not something I'll never do, but it's not something I'm, it's not what I chose for this, um, for the make along. Um, so yesterday I was rooting through all my stuff and here, let me clean up a bit. <laughs> um, looking for my, my leftover bits of sock yarn and minis and things like that. And I came across in a bag in a box downstairs. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Anyway, I hope I'm entertaining you. Um, crochet that I had done previously. I taught myself, I always wanted to know how to crochet and no one could teach me because I was left-handed. So thank goodness for YouTube and all of that because you can look up any crochet pattern that you, that you want. There, that's better. Anyway, I'm fidgety, do you notice? Um, any crochet pattern that you want and they'll give you instructions on how to do it. So on Tannis Fiber Arts website, a long time ago, she had this blanket made out of hexagons and it was stunning. It was made in her signature palette and it was absolutely gorgeous. And it was way beyond my level of um, ability of crochet. However, somewhere online, I found an African violet hexagon <laughs> tutorial and I started churning out 
these. So they're so pretty. And uh, if you search Tannis Viber Arts and African Violet um, crocheted blanket, you'll be able to see a finished product. So I, I forgot completely about these. And I thought, oh, look at that. I saw one or two in the bag. And then as I'm taking them out, I realize I have probably enough to do a whole baby blanket. <laughs> like I have 44 or 41 hexagons that I've never taken the time to sew together. I mean, I just, they're lovely. I could give them away as um, coasters, <laughs> but they're gonna be a bl baby blanket um, and be put away for some future special baby that hopefully um, will come along, a good friend's baby or another grandchild, who knows, you never know. Um, but there's 44, 41 or 44, I don't remember, but stacks, like stacks of them. And they're all made out of the same yarn. It's a DK weight. It's a great weight to crochet with. I've been thinking now, like to crochet my dad a blanket for Christmas, because he gets cold. Um, well, he made, who knows if he's still in Victoria at Christmas. Um, so, but yeah, look at, like tons, tons, tons. More than I can actually hold. And they're all different. I think that her, I think it's six or seven, it's maybe seven different colors, plus a skein of um, the new natural. So that's how many I have. So one of these days, I'm gonna get to get, get myself, get my act together, and I'm gonna figure out how to put them together. So, uh, and then pack them away for a special gift someday. So, so I can crochet, I've discovered. And, quite intricately too. So I decided, I, I love seeing all the scrappy blankets that are online. So I decided to try and do a scrappy blanket out of my sock yarn. And I found, I don't think I have it here. I don't, I have tons of minis. And I also have lots of pretty decent amounts of sock yarn left over in a ball. So I put them all in a plastic hold, like plastic holder and um, I'm gonna wind off 10 or 15 grams out of each, wind off the ball into small 10 or 15 grams um, and then uh, just put them all in and grab them out. And so this is what I'm doing. I don't even know. Here's the end I left off at. So it took me forever to cast on last night, like almost all day. And it's really quite much simpler than what I just did there. But this is going to be my scrappy uh, granny stripe blanket. I love granny stripes. When I was little and my dad's father passed away, um, all the gran I wasn't little, I was maybe seven, eight, nine. Um, we got to say if we wanted to have anything um, and my um, grandfather had this old rocking chair it was blue it um, here it is it was blue and it was made from scraps or, not the chair it had this old blue chair that wasn't worth anything but I wanted that blue chair and I especially wanted the crocheted blanket that went behind it which was a granny square blanket which I'm sure my great grandmother or my grandmother had made, who I never had the pleasure of meeting because she passed before I was born. Um, and I just loved that blanket. <laughs> and it was just, it was very rough yarn. It was not, you know, not warm. It was warm, of course, because it was wool, but it wasn't soft and, but uh, really beautiful, bright colors. And uh, every, every square was attached together. And it just, I don't know, it just meant something to me and I i really wanted it, even as a young girl. Um, so that, that feeling I had with that blanket is what I wanna recreate for somebody else or maybe myself. I'm thinking this is gonna go on our couch. Um, and that blanket was crocheted fairly loosely. Um, and uh, so I really, I, I think I'm getting, I'm getting the look that I want. It's sort of old, antique -y, um, a little bit, I don't know. 
If you see mistakes, I don't want to hear about them because <laughs> I'm quite proud of them. And this is uh, just two colors already. It's going to take me a long time. Fingering's a lot. There's 201 um, chain cap, 201 chains. I don't know what you call it. I actually did that part with yarn held double because I was having a really hard time picking up, picking them up for the first row of single um, crochet, which sort of anchors this blanket. This pattern is from Attic 24 and it's her granny stripe blanket. And I've copied a lot of, actually, I think she had the African violet too. She has a lot of really great crochet patterns. And she has a lot of um, really great tutorials on crochet. So um, it's worth having a look at her site. And um, I think mostly everything she does is for free. And she has a little donate button, buy me a coffee. So every time I go in there, I usually send her a couple, <laughs> send her a few dollars just to say thank you for pro pro providing all that amazing crochet um, for, um, for free. And, uh, I've used her pattern, like I said, a few times and I really, really like it. So for her different patterns. So um, yeah, so that's my project this afternoon is to wind off more um, little bits of yarn and then just reach in the bag and grab whatever I want. Um, and my idea is that it will just look like home. So, um, uh, okay. So I think, oh, 41 minutes, I'm good. <clears throat> Uh, oh, I had other things. I had it. See, because I bought, put off my whole list of things to do got bigger. And I thought one of the other things I've been doing to occupy myself um, is reading. Not as much as I normally do, but a little bit. So I had thought I would share a couple books that I have read recently that I really enjoyed. One is They Left Us at Everything by Plum Johnson. And it's a memoir. A really really good book about a family um, selling the family home after the passing of their mom and it just was it's just a really great family story um, and then the next one a little um, I have someone coming downstairs what I'm okay oh, wait a minute I'm almost done just wait one second close the door She's going out, she's going to her boyfriends because they isolate together. <laughs> the next book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is pretty light reading. Um, it's um, about a 50s movie star and uh, her seven husbands and all that goes along with that. Um, and it was really good. And the author is Taylor Jenkins Reid. And uh, it was just an easy um, read sort of take you out, out of the misery that is going on. <clears throat> so I guess that's it. Um, again, please comment if you want, um, would like to participate in a Zoom meeting below and I will um, contact whoever says they'd like to and set up a date. Um, the other thing is please subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Um, and if you could, if you have an Instagram or you're interested, um, if you can uh, tag our podcast, that would be great. Um, we're really trying to get reach more and more knitters in this in this time and in all times because I just um, such a community. I love all of you. It's uh, I don't know what I do without my knitting friends or my knitting, frankly. So I hope you have a good day. I'm sure it won't be long till I podcast again. Um, but I love you. Keep stitching and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.